Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Alleluia. Lift your hands to Jesus. Give him quality thanks tonight. Thank him for the abundance of his grace in this place. Thank him for his word. He has gathered us to bless us. He has gathered us to lift us. He has gathered us to wipe our tears. Someone pray. Are you praying to the God of all grace? Lift your voice with faith in your heart. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come. minute I like you to verbalize your expectations father I have come give me an encounter father I am here turn my morning to dancing turn my sorrow to joy go ahead verbalize your expectations I will not walk out of this place with this medical report this sickness this infirmity this yoke upon my life, this embargo of shame and reproach, it must drop finally tonight. A believer is crying to the God of heaven. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and declare. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Koinonia Global, cry to the God of all grace. Declare your expectation tonight, US, Canada, UK, South Africa, Ghana, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Abuja, Lagos, Jos, Maiduguri, Port Harcourt, all across the globe, those connecting online, make sure you are an active part of this prayer, verbalize your request. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Wipe my tears. Give me a testimony. Let a song of joy emanate from my spirit on account of your workings in my life tonight. Show me your salvation tonight. Open up closed doors tonight. Rewrite my story tonight. Give me a turn around tonight. This is part of the service already. Are you praying? Be full of faith. Cry out your expectation. Outside, are you praying? All the overflows. All the viewing centers. Connect by faith. Cry as you pray to the God of all grace. Shabata balake parata kaprande kebereke paratos. Shabarante bereke tibalaka prande kebereke tos. Oh, I go forward tonight. I go forward tonight. I make progress. I access the graces required for the next level of my life. I access the graces required for the next level of ministry. I access the graces required for the next dimension of kingdom exploits. Someone is praying for clarity and direction in the name of Jesus that in the course of the service you will hear him speak. He will appear unto you by his word like he did unto Samuel.
in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray final prayer and then you'll be seated father the discernment the discernment to recognize my word when it comes the discernment to know it is me you are speaking about when you speak I obtain that grace I reject the carelessness of Jacob the Lord is in this place and I will know the Lord is visiting me and I will know that when my word comes I will not be insensitive when my word comes I will not be careless when my word comes I will not be undiscerning someone is praying your answers are the mercy of his word when he sends his word with his word healing comes with his word deliverance comes with his word liftings come I obtain grace to be sensitive I receive grace to be discerning that when my word come I will know it was sent by God for me in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray father we cry that you will do us good tonight we cry that you will do us good tonight we cry that you will lift burdens tonight we cry that you will give people a new song tonight we cry that there will be spectacular miracles in this place tonight we cry that even while in church testimonies will meet people in church that whilst people are here in church good news will arrive their phones their emails that whilst they are in church others will be in a hurry to let them know what God is already doing in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare over someone that even before the service is ended you would already be sharing your testimony visitations by the mighty God of heaven if you are that person shout a believing amen one more time hallelujah walk up to three people and tell them be expectant three people and by faith challenge them encourage them be that prophet for one minute over their lives midwife their breakthroughs tell them be expectant you may be gloriously seated the Lord bless you welcome to a miracle service for the month of October celebrate Jesus hallelujah the Lord has raised this ministry as a burning bush and you saw the fire burning and you came through the fire you will hear his voice and from his voice you will receive spectacular miracles you see our confidence in doing the things that we do is the fact that God is here not just that he's alive our confidence is number one that God is in the midst of his people the Bible says the Lord in the midst of his people is mighty number two we are confident that his word is in our midst because where the word of a king is the Bible declares there is power power to heal power to lift power to rewrite stories power to deliver that which God intended for you from the eons of time are we together and wherever the word is there is also grace because he came full of grace and truth he says sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth so everywhere his word is grace and peace even that which can be multiplied is also there that means someone you came into this place but you are about to encounter an impartation you will truly contact grace grace that will speak in your life from today grace for exploits in ministry grace to bring an end to every wilderness the Bible says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness be counted for a fruitful field and a fruitful field for a forest I pray over someone your season of dryness has come to an end whatever dryness means for you whether it's finances whether it is lack of helpers in the name of Jesus I pray for you already that wilderness by the reign of the spirit tonight it must be turned to a forest 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we can confidently welcome you to a place of real solutions. We are not the fig tree with leaves without fruits. There are enough fruits for everyone to take. And the Bible tells us that um, they that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God, but they will not just stop there. It says in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. Are we together now? It shall be like a tree that is planted by the riverside. It yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatsoever he does, whatsoever he does, he doeth prospers. You will prosper in the name of Jesus. I want you to be very attentive to the word of God because when the word of God comes, so comes his power. The direction of God's word is the direction of God's power. Whatever God is saying is what he wants to do. When he speaks, his power moves the direction of his word to bring performance. And I want you to be very sensitive. There is a lot to do tonight. I sense in my heart that people came with burdens and came with hunger. There are people who came insisting to see the glory of God. And I assure you by the God of heaven, you will not be disappointed. And let me tell you the truth. It doesn't matter whether you are here in the main auditorium or any of the overflows outside, you know, any of our viewing centers or anywhere at all. I want you to believe that God is able to come through for you right where you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. The woman with the issue of blood did not have an opportunity to walk with Jesus directly. She sat down and said to herself that as he passes by, I know he's fair enough to reach my direction. And when he comes, I will touch the helm of his garment and I shall be made whole. And among the many people who were thronging onto Jesus, a woman came with faith and expectation. She touched the helm of his garment and that was the end of it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Lord will do you good tonight. Be sensitive for your word. If it's a word, a prophetic word and it concerns you, make sure you are apt to hear. And if it is you, if you are required to come, you come quickly so that you do not waste the time of others from receiving their own word. Hallelujah. Participate in the service. Don't be a spectator. And don't think that God is visiting others then leaving you aside. No. The God of the Bible, the God of Koinonia visits everyone. Because this promise is unto you, to your children, to your children's children, even as many as are far of those who the Lord will call. He has called you tonight. He will do you good. Shout a believers, amen. There are two questions we need to answer tonight, but then I'll start with Psalm 77. We'll read 12 to 15, and then we'll attempt to answer two questions as a charge to build up our faith, and we'll trust the God of all grace, the miracle worker, to step in and surprise you one more time in the name of Jesus Christ. I will meditate also of thy work and talk of thy doing. Verse 13, it says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary, who is so great a God as our God. Verse 14, it says, Thou art the God that doeth wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Final verse, Thou hast with thy arm redeemed thy people, the sons of, Joseph, of Jacob and of Joseph. With his mighty arm, he will redeem you tonight. Amen. The first question tonight is, how real are supernatural interventions? How real are miracles? Is it true that God is able to visit his people? What is the proof? How real? Because there are many believers who come to God, but sincerely, as much as they come to church, as much as they love God, they have not settled as a revelation that God is able to move upon people and to give them testimonies. How real are miracles? How real are signs and wonders? Is it true that God heals? Is it true that God heals supernaturally? Is it true that God delivers? Is it true that a man can come to God oppressed and walk away free? Is it true that a man can come to God sick, plagued of every kind of infirmity? You had the testimony 
of you know the the fellow that talked about eating you know unable to eat you can imagine that kind of demonic situation when you're not able to eat when you're not able to retain food retain water that is not sickness that is the spirit of death because man lives by bread and the word whatever stops you from eating bread and stops you from receiving the word must be the thief that comes to kill to steal and to destroy are we together two things you need to live an excellent life bread and the word of God bread for your bodily sufficiency the word of God for the strengthening of your spirit anything that steals these two things from your life is a thief if you have the word and you do not have bread you must use the word to get bread are we together now man shall not live by bread alone but by every word so how real are supernatural interventions does God really visit people? Does God really change the stories of people? Is it true that a man can come to the presence of God, trusting God for a mighty, miraculous intervention, and that that person can actually walk back with a testimony? Is it true that someone can come maybe in debt, owing, borrowing, you know, neck deep in all kinds of financial situations, and God is able to step in, and give that person a miracle it's important that we believe that God is able to do all of this and what is the proof I will tell you the proof that God still moves supernaturally is found all through scripture you see as a believer the foundation of your convictions is first the Word of God before the testimony of anyone who has benefited within your reach. Are we together? The, the basis for our conviction in the kingdom is scripture. Outside of the word of God, you are already at risk. Whatever you believe that is not founded upon the integrity of the word does not have sustainability, does not have longevity. So when we say God is a miracle worker, what is the basis? Thank God for the testimonies that we shared in the altar here. Thank God for the testimonies we're about to receive. But the correct order of your convictions is that number one, the Bible says so, scripture. The Bible tells us in John chapter 20 from verse 30 and 31, the Bible says many other miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. So Jesus was a miracle worker commanding signs and wonders which are not recorded in this book, verse 31, but these are written. So there were miracles that were written, not just stories. Stories were written, parables were written, principles were written, but miracles, supernatural divine interventions were also documented that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing, you will have life through his name. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. Jesus went about doing good. He always goes about doing good through his spirit now. And the Bible says, healing all they that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The miracles that we expect are as real as the miracles that happen in the Bible. Does God move supernaturally? Does he wrought miracles in the midst of his people? Ask Abraham and Sarah. They have the answer to your question. Ask Gideon. He will tell you that God can come in and intervene over a family, a family with a background of a lowly estate, and he can lift anyone from any family and bring you to a place of notoriety. Is God able to move in the midst of his people? Esther has an answer for you that God can pick a village girl and within the shortest possible time exalt and honor her so much and bring her to the place of notoriety. Is God able to move and rewrite the stories of men? Ask Ruth. Ruth lost her husband, lost her children. Everything went bad in her life. But God gave her a second chance with beauty and color. Does God move in the midst of his people? Ask Saul, who later became Paul, a man who spearheaded the persecution of the church. And now by mercy, he later became the chief apostle, spearheading and frontiering the program of God. 
How real are miracles? Ask the woman with the issue of blood that even if it's after 12 years of oppression, 12 years of spending all her wages on physicians and practitioners and she was in no way better, in one moment she touched the hem of his garment and received her miracle. How real are miracles? Ask blind Bartimeo. He would tell you that no matter how deserted you've been with any kind of blindness, physical, spiritual, that God is able to, with one command from his word, turn that blindness and you receive your sight. How about Lazarus? How about the woman, the widow at Nain? How real are miracles? Ask the woman in Zarephath, having only a little morsel of flour for her bread and then a bit of water for survival for her and her son. The prophet appears and says, surely according to the word of the Lord, your flour will not be spent, your water will not deplete. And the Bible says it was so according to the word of the man of God. How real are miracles, signs and wonders. Ask the nation of Israel in the days of Jehoshaphat that they were surrounded by enemies. It was clear that they were going to be defeated. But when they laid down their weapons of war and began to chant praises unto God, the Lord himself discomfited their enemies and they began to kill themselves, one helping to kill the other. How real are miracles? Ask Jesus at his crusade using five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 people and the Bible tells us there were 12 baskets. This was aside women and children. How real are miracles? Ask Jesus himself. The one who died, went to the grave, was buried with proof. The Bible says on the third day he resurrected by the glory of the Father. Are we together now? That everything that is dead and buried under a certain condition, it can come back to life again. I feel like speaking over someone. I don't know what died. I don't even know what was buried. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I invoke the power that raised Christ from the dead. Everything dead or dying in your body, dead or dying in your finances, it must answer, it must hear the voice of the Lord and come back to life tonight in the name of Jesus. 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 Please be seated. How real are miracles? Go to the book of John chapter 2 and you will see that an embarrassment was going to happen at a wedding feast in Cana of Galilee. And the Bible says at the instruction of Jesus, six pots were filled with water and they turned to wine supernaturally. That means it is not God's will for believers to, to perpetually dwell in shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Hallelujah. This is the God of the Bible. God is able to step in and work mighty miracles. It is important for you to believe tonight that he is Savior, he is Lord, he is King. But please believe that he is a miracle worker. Miracles are real. Find a way to believe it. Healings are real. Your organs were created. The Bible says, John chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, without him was all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Anything made that was made. As humans, there are times where we constructed beautiful structures and tornadoes or rains or storms or floods came and washed them away. We felt bad, but our consolation was that we had the power to rebuild again. Are we together now? And we went back to rebuild those structures sometimes better than what was there. If that is true for men, how much the God of heaven? I'm praying for someone. I don't know what organ you have lost. I don't know what satanic verdict has come upon your life. But in the name of Jesus, may God give you brand new organs tonight. Brand new organs tonight. In the name of Jesus. It seems to me like we live in a world now that is gradually getting more and more carnal, more and more fleshly, more and more sensual to an extent that every time we hear of any spectacular manifestation of the Spirit, the first thing that comes to our mind is either the man of God is lying, exaggerating, you know, and so on and so forth. And sometimes we are right, unfortunately. 
but I want you to never get used to the the uh, what I call it the limitations that come with the sense realm such that we we limit God to science we limit God to sociology we limit God to philosophy there is an aspect of philosophy science sociology that can explain God but there are dimensions in God that none of these bodies of knowledge can explain are we together we need to be very careful so that we don't reduce God to become a scientific experiment. If we cannot interpret how 1 plus 1 becomes 10, we conclude that it is wrong, it cannot be God. Let me tell you the truth. God is a God of principles, but God is the Almighty. It is within His power to do anything, anyhow, and He's still right. Are we together now? He's not bound by any principle. It is within His power. There is no injustice. There is no reference reference for judging him no he cannot be judged by anyone he is god all by himself he began the beginning and so he qualifies to manipulate anything according to his will and it is still righteous are we together now i'm here to shake you to really believe that god is a miracle worker because there are many people who do not believe. Someone may come with a crutch, for instance, and maybe you had a broken bone, maybe you are not able to walk, maybe for some arthritis, and you are seated there and you've seen miracles and you are hoping things will happen, but the truth is that for many people, they do not yet believe that this can actually happen. It is the reason why real miracles are very powerful because they comfort believers and build faith in them. But you'll be surprised Believing the works of God is the ministry of the Holy Spirit because there are people who saw Jesus, they walked and saw miracles every day and yet the Bible says some doubted. Hallelujah. I believe in miracles, oh, I do. I really believe in miracles. I believe that God is able to wipe the tears of people supernaturally. I believe that miracles are an act of God's mercy an act of God's love because he knows that men are not as detailed to walk in keeping with every principle that should produce results. We are humans and many times we default on the principle so we do not get the kind of results that principles should deliver either because of carelessness, because of ignorance, because of attacks and so he has scheduled orchestrations of his mercy called the miraculous to bail us out. This is proof of love. Hallelujah. God knows that the way to prosper is to exchange value, to turn your value to products and services, to serve it excellently. But he also knows that there are times that things are not as ideal as that. And so he, he keeps as a reserve supernatural power to prosper prophetically. That in, in addition to your value, that there are times that it can fail and the power of God can descend upon your life and turn your life around overnight. If you do not believe this, your life will be a plethora of bad stories and pain. God designed that the food we eat, the plants and the trees, by themselves, they should provide enough health and nourishment. But he knows that there are times for various reasons we are not able to derive maximum health and utility from all of these plants and animals. He knows that there are times that the devil manipulates the systems, that there are times there can be death in the pot. And so he left his healing power that if and when these variables fail, he is still God and his love still insists that we are healed. Hallelujah. We are not supposed to spend our life living off miracles. But miracles are a testament of God's mercy because provided you are human, you will need a miracle one day. Are we together now? You heard the story of the gentleman. Money was deposited in his account and according to him for nothing at all that he did, the money disappeared and he was about to get into trouble. At that point, it may not necessarily be an issue of carelessness. It may not be an issue of negligence. How about a man who leaves his house in the morning and unfortunately, Let's say his car develops some problem or maybe he has some accident, someone hits his car. He may not be a making of himself. He was as careful as he could be. But these are realities in life. Miracles are powerful. 
Miracles demonstrate to the saints that God is alive. Miracles demonstrate that God is still alive and that he is thoughtful and mindful of you. I'm praying for you. May a unique miracle from heaven come as a letter from Jesus to you tonight. For some of you, what God will do in your life will be him saying, I still know your name and I'm still ready to visit you as I said to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How do you tame the joy that is expressed in the life of someone, for instance? Let's say someone who has been diagnosed having some blood condition and it is clear that that person is about to die. 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, say for instance, as a sickler in pain and in one moment God visits the person. How do you tame that kind of joy? Or someone who has been trusting God to get a job, it's interrupted his focus. He's not able to go to church because he doesn't even have transport and he's trusting God to bring beauty and color so that he can serve him. I hope you know that the purpose of liberty is to allow you the luxury of serving the Lord without pain. He says, let my people go that they may go and serve me. Every time God brings you out of bondage, he's giving you ample space. He's giving you the resources and the opportunity to concentrate on destiny. There is nothing that distracts destiny like setbacks. Setbacks including poverty, all kinds of problems. My God will give you peace tonight. I say to you again, my God will give you peace tonight. Ah, the Holy Ghost will move tonight as an usher from row to row finding out what is distracting your focus finding what is not allowing you to pray finding out what is not allowing you to fast finding out what is not allowing you to sleep and my God will correct it by his power my God will correct it by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means let me tell you this pain and trouble and despair they have a goal when orchestrated by satan and demon spirits the ultimate goal is to attack your faith he said satan desire to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not that's what he really wants to attack your faith when he attacks your faith, he attacks your joy. When he attacks your joy, he attacks your peace and he leaves you to die naturally. Because when you lose faith, when you lose joy, when you lose peace, it's over for you. Are we together? Yeah. So how real are miracles? They are as real as every story documented in this Bible. How real are miracles? They are as real and potent as the character of the one who produces them. As real, as secured, as stable as the character of the one who produces them. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Is that still in your Bible? The same today. I like the fact that he's the same today. The same forever. Jesus Christ, the same. In other words, Jesus Christ, the healer yesterday. He's still the healer today, the lifter yesterday. He's still the lifter today, the blesser yesterday. He's still the blesser today. The rewriter of stories and destinies yesterday. He's still the same today and he will be the same forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? Hmm. Miracles are as real as the character of the God that produces them. He says, I am the Lord and I change it not. I am consistent in my character. Once I have spoken and twice have you heard that power belonged to the Lord. He is all powerful. He is still all powerful. He was El Shaddai yesterday. He is still El Shaddai today. He is El Shaddai forever. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Second question. And this is the more important question tonight. What does it take? To experience the liberating power of God in my life and your life tonight. Seeing that God is still a miracle worker. God is still a proof producer. God still visits men. He still visits men rewriting their stories as he did in scripture. As he's done every day to someone. The greater question tonight is that what does it take to experience the liberating power of God? What does it take 
to experience victory in your life and my life even tonight this is why we are gathered what does it take to experience tonight the power that heals what does it take to experience the power that delivers what does it take to experience the power that restores what does it take to experience the power that can rest upon a man and orchestrate supernatural supplies i was meditating on this scripture and is um, i mean on, on on my notes and a scripture quickened into my spirit i shouted like a madman my god shall supply all your needs i've read that scripture many times but it just occurred to me that needs are supplied and it says my god shall supply all your needs all your needs that means god is aware that we have needs and that there is a provision in his economy to supply for all your needs according to his riches in glory all your needs financial needs all your needs relational needs all your needs ministry needs i'm praying for someone who believes this scripture that my god like paul said tonight not tomorrow not after service as the service is ongoing may my god walk around your row walk around your aisle and supply all your needs in the name of jesus in the name of jesus christ what does it take to experience the power that makes greatness out of an ordinary person it is true that God makes great the Bible says it is within his power to make great it is within his power that God can increase a man's greatness and comfort that man on every side what does it take to experience the power that can provide supernatural direction it says thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it and you will find rest for your soul what does it take to experience the power that produces laughter Sarah laughed and said all who hear this will laugh with me you have turned my morning to dancing he says you have turned my sorrow to joy when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion by that same power it says we were like them that dream and they said among the heathen the Lord had done great things for us it says the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad whereof we are glad hmm. I'm going to give you very quickly three keys that are responsible for experiencing the liberating power of Jesus. And I tell you, I sense in my heart that as I bring these keys, the power of the Holy Spirit will be resting on people, quickening them, number one, to believe these truths, but number two, releasing results already in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you tonight. You will not need to tell anybody that you are in a strong covenant with God. Your results will speak evidently 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 you will not have to tell anyone you came to church God will sign upon your life he will sign upon your destiny he will sign upon your family it will be evidence to men that you love God it will be evidence to men that you believe in God you believe that shout amen, amen. number one what is the first key to experiencing the liberating power of God even tonight the first key is the hearing of faith Luke chapter 5 and verse 15 please be attentive God is handing to you the keys that control the miracles you seek to receive tonight be attentive by the Spirit and those following online make sure you are writing take notes and listen don't just wait with prayer requests no take notes and listen listen the Spirit of God is handing to you the keys. They are irrefutable keys that control the administration of the power of God over a man, a family, a business. Doesn't matter what the challenge is. All miracles begin. The working of miracles starts with the hearing of faith. Are we together? The Bible says, but so much the more went out a fame abroad of him and great multitudes like great multitudes have gathered here tonight great multitudes came together listen to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities they didn't just come to be healed 
it starts with the hearing of faith. It is not every kind of hearing that is called the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. I wrote here that faith to receive comes when you hear certain truths from scripture. The basis for the hearing of faith is that if the information that is communicated is scripture based, then your hearing becomes a hearing that produces faith. There is the hearing of lamentation. There is the hearing of doubt and fear. Are we together? But there is the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith is when you hear a communication that is derived from scripture, it imparts faith to your spirit. The hearing of faith. The faith to receive, even tonight, comes when you hear truths from scripture. For instance, when you hear that God is all powerful, what you are hearing now is consistent with the integrity of the word. So what you are hearing is the hearing of faith. It produces faith within your spirit because it is true that God is all powerful. It says, our Lord God, thou hast created the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Nothing is impossible for you. The Bible says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. When you hear a preacher speak like this, what you are hearing is the hearing of faith. If you're with me, say amen. amen. When you hear that God desires you to be healed, God desires you to be delivered. God desires you to prosper. God desires you to be great. That is the hearing of faith. Because all of that information is consistent with God's desire. He says, I desire speaking by the Spirit that ye prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. That he that did not spare his son but offered him up for us, how much more with him shall he give us all things to enjoy? God for you. When you hear that God desires your healing, he says, None, no inhabitant in Zion shall say, I am sick. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. He sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destructions. The hearing of faith is the hearing that is consistent with the speakings of scripture. Are we together? Most people hear, but it is not the hearing of faith. They hear the, the hearing of opinions, the hearing of doubts, the hearing of fear. Are we together now? Yes. The hearing of faith is that you must hear which that is consistent, that which is consistent with the word of God, the logos of God, the thoughts of God. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It says the same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Colossians 1.16, speaking about the supremacy of the word, that all things were created by him, all things were created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, and so on and so forth. It says they were created by him and they were created for him. The hearing of faith. Now that you are hearing what I'm saying, you are receiving it by in your spirit. Ah, so it is true that this financial situation, God is more interested in it than I am interested in. Listen, when you know this, your, your faith is built. Are we together now? This family calamity, this sickness, this disease is not giving God glory. God is not glorified in it at all. The hearing of faith. It gets you angry. A holy dissatisfaction is planted upon your spirit by reason of what you hear. Now you'll be ready to receive, to release your faith to receive. Most believers want miracles, but they are not even sure what the word of God says concerning their desires. Hallelujah. They looked at Jesus one time and said, if you are willing, I can be made clean. And Jesus said, I'm willing, be clean. I am willing. If it is my willingness, you can be sure that I am willing. It is God who is at work in us both to will and to do. He plans the desire and he midwives the manifestation both to will and to do. Every godly desire that is put in your spirit, provided it will glorify the Christ, you can be sure that God is behind it. Are we together now? Let me ask you an honest question. Do you think you are a better Christian 
if you are able to pay the school fees of your children and live a life of dignity please answer me do you think you'll be a better Christian if you are free from all of these medical reports that come to you every week with varying results over your health do you think you'll be a better Christian do you think you'll be a better Christian when you are healthy and strong and the doctor tells you that you are 50 but your organs look like you are 20 does that sound like good news to you do you think that you will be able to serve God better as he promotes you and gives you capacity to earn more, to live a decent life and to help others to be blessed? Does that look like the blessing of Abraham working in you? Man of God, do you think you will be a more effective man when you walk with the anointing of the Spirit in ever increasing dimensions that the things that could not happen yesterday through your ministry, now you obtain grace of the Spirit and you are able to wrought mighty things by the Spirit. Will it make you an effective witness? Yes, sir. Everything that can help you serve God well, don't reject it. Everything that can help you serve God well, don't reject it. Are we together now? Everything that can help you serve God well, if good health will help you serve God well, open up your heart to embrace it. If peace of mind, serenity of mind will help you serve God well, you can be sure that God will be more than willing to bring it. Because the Bible says, watch this now, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God desires, he desires that as we serve his purposes, we live victorious lives. He's not a wicked God, he's not a wicked father that desires us to indefinitely remain in pain, loss, defeat, retrogression, and then he burdens us with a threat to serve him. That is not the portrait of a kind father. The Bible says God is love. Shout that after me, please. God is love. One more time. When you say a person is love, that means every overflow of the attributes of love should be found in the person. A person who is genuinely loving will most likely be kind. Am I right? A person who is loving will most likely be a giver. The person who is loving will most likely be caring. The person who is loving will most likely be thoughtful with a lot of empathy. The person who has love will most likely be patient, very understanding, very accommodating, very hospitable. So when you say God is love, don't just give a religious understanding. All the attributes that support love must be found in him. Else that scripture would have told a lie. God is love. He gives. God is love. He lifts. God is love. He restores. God is love. He will not watch you crying and ignore you. That is the reason why he's made his spirit, he's made his word, he's made his power available for you to know what he can do for you tonight. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. As you are hearing this, may faith, the faith to receive all that God has in store for you, whether for your healing, whether for your liberty, let that faith be built in your spirit now. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you ignore the hearing of faith, you have shortchanged yourself as far as receiving from God is concerned. It is the reason why Satan hates the word. He hates the ministry of the word because as the word comes, understanding comes. With understanding, conviction is built or conviction is strengthened. Listen carefully. Conviction at the instance of the teaching of the word comes or conviction is built. And that is another name for faith. Your conviction plus the grace to take actions that support your conviction. God is only committed to perform at the point of your manifesting faith. So key number one, you want to experience the liberating power of God, the restoring power, the healing power of Jesus. It comes through the hearing of faith. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the truth. Nothing happening to you today is new. Let me comfort you. There is nothing happening in your life and my life today that is new. Who is listening? You have to believe this. 
Apostle, my, I have a very unique health concern. I understand your pain, but I submit to you it is not new. And if you think it is new, ask the man Job. If you think it is new, ask the man at Bethesda for 38 years. If you think it is new, ask the woman with the issue of blood. If you think it is new, you go ahead and ask people in the Bible who were plagued with all kinds of infirmities. How about those the Bible says were born with that condition? For most of us, we were not even born with the condition. It just happened as, as, as we sojourned. But there were people who were born with it. And yet God visited them. There is nothing that is new. Let that comfort you tonight. How about financial situations? Refer to Job, a man who lost his estate, lost his finances, lost everything overnight. Worst off, he lost all the people who could help him get back again. They disappeared from his life. Nothing that happens to you now is new. Joblessness, it's always been there. You find a parallel of it in scripture. Delay, retrogression, satanic attacks, curses, bondage. Talk about the nation of Israel in Egypt for 430 years. You know what it means? That some grew and died in Egypt, never knowing that deliverance was a possibility. Yet he told Abraham that after 400 years, that deliverance will come to God's people. The Bible says the thing that was is the thing that is and the thing that will be. There is nothing new under the sun. You know why? Because Satan uses the same men to produce the same thing. And there is only so much we can stretch in terms of our creativity and our ideas. There's only so much. The wickedness of men is defined. There's only so much they can think about. But I'm praying for you. It doesn't matter in what direction Satan has come around your life. The God who did it before in the Bible, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, may he do it in your life even tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you learning? So key number one that controls experiencing the liberating power of God is you must submit yourself to the hearing of faith. Number two, the second key is that you must expect to receive answers from God. You must expect to receive answers from God. Expect to receive answers from God. Even tonight, Proverbs 10, 28. Let's hurry up. The power of expectation. Proverbs 10, 28. The Bible says the hope or the expectation of the righteous shall be gladness. It says, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. When the righteous expect, the Bible says it is gladness. I think that should be NIV or maybe amplified. That the hope of the righteous is gladness or joy. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 18. Expect to receive answers from God. This is the second key. Let this be a prophetic word for someone. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end to rent issues. Ay, 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 ay. Surely there is an end to shame and reproach. Surely there is an end to crying every night. Surely there is an end to endless court cases. Surely there is an end to begging and borrowing. May tonight be the end in the name of Jesus. May tonight be the end in the name of Jesus. He says, surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. What is expectation? A strong belief that something will happen. A strong belief, a resolve within your heart that something, a desired outcome will happen. What is expectation? A state of strong optimism. A state of strong optimism. I know that I know that I know that I know that I will walk out of this place healed. It's called expectation. Hallelujah. A strong belief that everything God has said will happen in your life. Now, let me tell you something. Expectation has an attitude. There is an attitude to expectation. Show me two believers. And while the word of God is coming like it is coming right now, for the one, you can see that there is an attitude of joy excitement enthusiasm you are too expectant you you know you will be disappointed if god does not move over your life and another is passive careless full of doubt 
Well, amen, he looks around and sees people lifting their hands and says, oh, well, let me lift my own hand too. I don't even know what they are doing. You see, expectation has an attitude. In Acts chapter 3, the Bible tells us that Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer and they found a man who had been at Get Beautiful that he comes there every day, carried to and fro, and he looked at them and the Bible says that Peter and John, he begged them for arms, begged them as you usually do. And then the Bible says in verse 4, Peter and John, Peter fastening his eyes upon him said, look on us. I like verse 5. Let that be a lesson for someone tonight. The Bible says he gave heed to them, expecting to receive. My only encouragement is that don't expect to receive something. You must define your expectation. Give us this day, expecting to receive healing expecting to receive a breakthrough expecting to receive deliverance is someone learning now expecting to receive something from them now do you know that most believers and the lord put this in my spirit yesterday he said most matured believers do not grow because with their expectation they deaden their appetite i mean with their growth they deaden their appetite for expectations and it's true most matured Christians stop growing because they stop expecting. It's a usual service. God has done, I know, I'm, I'm trusting, I'm not sick, I'm not in pain. Ah, things are going here and there, you see, and they don't receive anything again. Most matured Christians, when he said this, I took out time to table my own expectation and I prayed. I said, I will not be familiar with you. Just because you are using me does not mean I will allow myself to be cheated. When God comes, he blesses whoever is hungry, including the one preaching. The arrogant who is hungry and, and sounds like you are a fool. You know there's a way they can share food in a program and pass you because of your arrogance? You are too proud. You look like, oh, this is not my kind of thing. And they feel that this food is too big for you, whereas you are hungry. And they pass you and leave you there. Because you have given an attitude that your kind does not need it. They just say, okay, it looks like you like water. You say, yes, water. And you are starving, you are hungry. Whereas you really want food. There are others who don't hide it. As the food is coming, they say, madam, wait, you are passing me. I'm not misbehaving, but I will not allow my portion to leave me. That is the kind of hunger. If you are too proud tonight, say, well, you are dying of a diagnosis. And whilst the power of God is coming, people are lifting their hands to receive. You are just watching, well, let's see here and there. My brother, you are the one who is suffering it. The one who wears the hurting shoe is the one who knows where it hurts. And so you must make up your mind. If your word comes, you receive. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ, expect to receive something from the Lord. At every level, there is something more God can do. Did you hear what I said? At every level. Some of us here, in all fairness, you have seen the faithfulness of God. And there's not much you are trusting that he does. But if you really are attuned with God's program, there will always be something more you are praying that God does in your life. Either greater grace, greater power, greater fire, greater ability from the spirit are we together there is always something more i'm praying for you what god has not done before may he do it tonight what god has not done before the kind of anointing he's not yet brought to your life the kind of open doors he has not yet brought in spite of the ones he has done before we thank him for yesterday's blessings but i'm praying for you see new things in your life Handle new dimensions in your life. I say it again, see new things in your life. Handle new dimensions in your life. Apostle, God has been faithful to me. I agree. But has he brought you to a level where you can lend to nations? Has he brought you to a level where you can finance his program? Don't tell me you are rich. How rich? Enough to sponsor the gospel without being affected? If you are not there, open up your heart. There can always be more. I pray for you again. See new things. See new things. See new things. See new things. In your life and in your destiny. Experience the more of God. Please be seated. You must expect to receive. If you are sick tonight, as the word of God comes, expect to be healed. 
Oh, I'm having high blood pressure. I'm having, say, HIV. I'm having symptoms of cancer, some prostate condition. I've been told by a doctor that I have this. Maybe I'm a sickler, trusting God to change my genotype. Don't be careless. You see, we come as a congregation, as a family. But when the Spirit of God begins to move, it is per person, per faith. So in your mind, the whole crowd disappears. And you imagine that God is speaking to an audience of one. That one being you. Lord, it is me and you tonight. I'm trusting that you wipe my tears. I came with my spouse, but with all due respect, I love my spouse. We'll see our service. But as it is now, Lord, visit me. Turn my morning to dancing. I came with my business partner. Thank God for my business partner. But this one, Lord, it is me and you. Are we together now? Expectation. 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 Hi. Look, let me tell you. you. You see that there are people in church who always receive. Do you know why? Their expectations are to the roof. Some of them fast and pray before they arrive church. Some of them arrive in the morning and they'll be praying like madmen before service starts. Foiling their expectations. There are others who arrive and sit and just enjoy the worship as if they're in a club and they share the grace and leave the Lord being in that place and they never know it. Hallelujah. Father, you even encourage me by giving somebody an opportunity to testify my expectations. Lord, finish it. You've started already. I I've already had a part of my testimony. I, I shouldn't go back without results. Are we together? Say, Father. Shout it. Say, Father. Tonight, I release my faith. Visit me. Turn it into prayer in one minute. I release my faith. I release my faith. I release my faith. Optimistic that this captivity will be turned around. Optimistic that you will open up doors for me. It doesn't cost you anything to touch the heart of my helper. It doesn't cost you anything to press oil upon my life for a new dimension. In Jesus' name we pray. So key number one, to see the mighty hand of God tonight, the hearing of faith. Number two, you must expect to receive answers from God. Number three, the third key is that you must listen for and obey the instructions connected to your desired result. You must listen for and obey the instructions connected to your desired results. I'll take that again. You must listen for and obey the instructions connected to your desired results. Your desired miracle, you must listen for and obey the instructions connected to your desired results. Now I wrote here and I want you to listen that every manifestation of God's power is connected to an instruction. Every manifestation of God's power, if it is the God of heaven, if it is the God of the Bible, manifestations are connected to divine instructions. Whether it is to fill six pots with water, like you find in John chapter 2 from verse 5 to 8, they came to Jesus desiring a miracle. And the Bible says that they feel Jesus instructed that they fill six pots with water. And having done that, he instructed them to take the risk. There is always a risk component to faith. You know what it meant for you to take water without tasting it yourself and then to take it to the rulers? What if the water did not turn to wine? That's why it is called faith. Your confident assurance that God will live up to your expectation. How about John chapter 5, 8 and 9? The man at Bethesda. Jesus gave him an instruction. He said, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Don't give me a 38 year old excuse. Rise up, take up your bed. Your excuse has been for 38 years. But in one minute, if you desire a miracle from me, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Verse 9, 
the Bible says that immediately the man was made whole and he took up his bed and walked on the same day not the same week the same day are we together every manifestation of God is connected to an instruction please listen this right here ladies and gentlemen as subtle as it is is the missing link it is the reason why many believers do not receive from God they hear the word of faith like you have heard truly they have expectations in their hearts but many have not been trained to understand that somewhere in the equation of your miracle this is why it is called the walking of miracles somewhere in the equation of your miracle an instruction will come when that instruction comes you listen for it and then you obtain grace to obey let's consider a lesson and then we'll begin to pray second kings chapter 5 please give us from verse 10 to 12 this was the story of naaman i want to draw a very powerful lesson that if you want to see the mighty hand of god then you must be ready to listen for and attend to every divine prophetic instruction that comes so naaman is desiring healing and he's been sent to Elisha and watch this now the Bible says Elisha sent a messenger Elisha did not even come out he sent a messenger to him saying go and wash listen now go and wash seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean verse 11 this usually is the challenge of many in church the Bible says but Naaman was angry what was his anger? He went away and said, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike or wave his hand over the place of my injury and recover the leper. And he was angry. And then he said, Are not Abana and Papha, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters that means are there no better nobler more intelligent scientific instructions you can give what do you mean by lift your hands what do you mean by shout amen what do you mean by shout jesus what do you mean by lay your hands where it hurts are there no more intelligent and the bible says he was angry he wanted to suggest to the prophet how he would be healed and the bible says that he turned away go back to verse 12 please he turned away and went away in rage he turned and went away in rage i have prayed for many people and sometimes it's very very funny how i pray for people especially people who maybe are on prayer lines and so on and so forth and they can come with very serious issues and sometimes i respect their pain their enthusiasm and they say apostle if you know my problem i said don't worry I, I, let me say this thing. I'm sorry we don't have the time but you just believe and then sometimes I tell them in the name of Jesus is done you see the shock mixed with anger all this pain for it is done you are like Naaman it is done means what some I mean well years ago it doesn't happen much now years ago people even used to be angry and say I didn't fall ah, I didn't fall I didn't fall come on now I watch people shout left and right and then I, I traveled all the way and you tell me it is done? This was the annoyance of Naaman. He came all the way, very, very long way. And then the prophet simply sends Gehazi to give him an instruction. Go and wash seven times, he says. And verse 13, that's a lesson for someone now. Verse 13, media. And the Bible says, And the servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, would thou not have done it? How much rather when he said to you, go and wash and be clean. And he said, eh. So you are saying I should do it. Okay, let me lay my hands. I hope I'll be healed. 14. The Bible says he obeyed that instruction. He went down and dipped himself. He submitted himself to that instruction according to the saying of the man of God. I like this. And because God confirms the word of his servants, he performs the counsel of his messengers. The Bible says his flesh came again like the flesh of a little child and he was clean. I pray for you. As you hear prophetic instructions and obey them with childlike faith, may God surprise you tonight. May God surprise you tonight. May God surprise you tonight. 
Hallelujah. There are three ways to receive instructions. One, it comes to you by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's a unique instruction that God gives to you. Two, it comes usually by the man of God God is using to administer his power to you. Number three, there are times that as an act of faith, the instruction comes within your own spirit. Nobody told the woman with the issue of blood to touch Jesus. It was not the Holy Ghost. It's not recorded there. The Bible says she said to herself, the same way the prodigal son said to himself, and the Bible says, say not in your heart. That means that there is a voice within your spirit. Are we together now? But the more generic way of receiving is to receive from the vessel that God is using to prime and to build your faith. That whilst you hear, instructions are going to be coming shortly. Listen, take your eyes away from your pain. Take your eyes away from your sad story. I know you came with your prayer request. Take your eyes for a moment away from it and look to Jesus. See, when you look to a man of God, it's not idolatry. You're not, this is all of me. There's not much that can be done to you from me by my own strength. The Bible already bails us out by teaching you that our sufficiency is not in ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God who has made us able, able ministers. Are we together? Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the spirit kill it, the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. So every instruction you are hearing, you must believe that these are instructions coming from the throne, passing through a vessel to you and with childlike faith. So if it's an instruction that yields your deliverance, your heart must be open. There, there's no special demon on you that cannot live. Are we together now? You cannot be, God forbid, but no, nobody here can be more demonized than the madman in Gadara. That guy had a legion of demons. And yet with one word, they left. Nobody can be more sick, in my opinion, than, than uh, uh, Job was. He had boils over his body. He was incapacitated, left for dead. The wife even encouraged him to just die and let her rest. And yet God restored him. How about Naaman? The Bible says God restored his flesh and it was like that of a baby. How about Hezekiah? God turned his life, adding 15 years to his life. How about Samaria? God turned a whole nation overnight. God for you. But if you are ready to listen for and to obey divine prophetic instructions, is someone learning now? I wrote something here and I want you to please listen as we prepare to pray. The awareness of the instruction does not produce results. It is acting on the instruction that delivers results. The awareness of the instruction you should engage for your liberty is not what brings results. Are we together? Oh, I'm aware. He said, stand up, okay? He said, lift your hands. I am aware. That's not where you get the results. It is the childlike obedience to the instructions, having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and when your obedience is complete. And you see, let me tell you this. The Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit, nor can he discern them. The reason is because they are spiritually discerned. The way of the spirit is beyond the way of science. The way of the spirit is beyond the way of intellect. There are times that prophetic instructions can come. It may not make sense to you. It is the way of God. Yours is to obey with childlike faith. And if it is true that it is God, you see the results that follow. If you do not see the results that follow, most likely the man of God is acting in the flesh. Are we together now? Fill six pots with water. And they did. Notice it was until they obeyed the first instruction before the second came. If they did not fill the six pots, there would be no need to tell them another instruction. That may even be a prophetic word for someone that God stopped speaking to you because he realized that his voice is not really valued by you. Every instruction he gives you falls on deaf ears, a careless mind, and a stubborn spirit. And he decided to pause with his speaking to you until he finds your yieldedness. The day you resume your yieldedness, his voice resumes. My God shall supply all my needs According to his riches in glory He will put his angels charge over me 
Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He will put his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Sing it one more time. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. He cares for you enough to bring you healing. He cares for you enough to anoint you. You are a man of God and you came here because you have struggled in ministry. No helpers, no membership, no growth, no revelation, no understanding, oppression. It's as if it's the devil that called you. You can encounter grace. You can encounter grace. What happens in a miracle service? Let me tell you. Number one, God reaches down to his people and wrought great deliverance. Deliverance from demon spirits, deliverance from negative conditions and patterns that tie down the lives and the destinies of God's people. Number two, God brings healing, all kinds of healings, bodily healings, especially emotional healings, wounded spirits, wounded minds. Are we together now? What does God do during a miracle service? He steps in and begins to met out supernatural solutions. Do you know? I have learned that as different as our faces are in truth, so are our challenges. Are we together now? For someone, the challenge may be silly with respect to another person's expectation. For instance, someone is seated here now trusting God to help a patient in the hospital who is dying. To that person, his prayer is not even prosperity or lifting. I want his, his survival. And that is the reason why when God comes, he does not deal with us as a general public. He comes to you one by one, paying detailed interest on your situation as though you were the only one who came to church. This is why he's called Father. God does not visit members. He visits his people. He visits his children one by one. Like he's going to be stepping here shortly. Some of you, what brought you here is confusion. Total confusion over your life, your destiny. Your life is literally scattered like a pack of cards in disarray. There's no beauty, no color, no glory, no nothing. Pale! The devil has brought you to that state. And when God is visiting you, you may not be sick in your body. But pray every prayer that we're going to be praying. Receive every prophetic word as a deposit upon your spirit. Now listen. There are times that you receive a credit alert from an individual to a bank and sometimes they will ask you to allow for a few hours or a few days before it becomes cashable. You understand that? So it's called book balance. When you check your balance, you will see that 1 million naira, who is receiving that 10 million naira? Money, 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 money. Amen. Some of you never shouted amen even during the prayer session. As soon as you had money now, you lifted two hands with a shout. Anyway, God is that generous to visit you at the point of your need. Because honestly, some people really need money. May God give it to you. In the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, I will speak it over your life. Unapologetically, may God give it to you. I know you don't believe it. May my God give it to you. May he surprise you in a way that you will say, what is this? This is the Lord's doing. Opening doors, strange doors for you. In the name of Jesus. Listen, everything that will make you an effective believer, tonight we will not spare in releasing it upon your life. If what you need is open doors for finances, th there's no point lying about it. In the name of Jesus, I pray again. May my God help you. May my God support you. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Hallelujah. So we're about to pray. For someone you came here sick, 
not even able to stand not even able to speak someone has courted you maybe you came blind maybe you came deaf maybe you came using a walking aid your own world needs the healer to visit you perhaps you may not need more prosperity you spent all your money what you need is to be healed listen for the word that comes for your healing for someone you're not able to explain the occurrences in your life but for certain you know that the hand of satan has to be behind this plethora of tragedies and pain listen for the word that comes for you for someone it may be direction lord should i travel to canada should i travel to us or should i stay here seeing that i've been you know denied visa 12 times 15 times is it still your will i came to church to find out because i don't know what to do again and you may be listening and while the service is ongoing you may hear a scripture or you may hear me speak prophetically for you go again for instance and that's the word and you will say but master we have told all night and god says hey now you go again there was something you didn't carry on your head before <laughs> hallelujah how about someone whose business has been failing failing you are neck deep in debt how about someone as a family you are in complete disarray nothing is working father is not working mother is not working how about people who are not spiritually vibrant i mean your house is just an open gate for demons to come in and come out nobody has spiritual intelligence enough to stand and say restore to become a wall of protection and defense over your family and whilst you are sitting you will encounter an anointing and you will go back with a greater prayer fire and begin to generate power in the spirit rewrite your family story again usually when God wants to visit families he does not come to everybody he uses one available person once he gets that point of entry he begins to penetrate every nook and cranny of that family through that one person I'm praying for you may that one person be you may that one person tonight be you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ don't wait for your case to be mentioned let your hunger mention your case are we together now don't wait for your case to be mentioned let hunger rise from within your spirit rise from within your spirit I remember someone who told me one day jokingly and said tell God that if you don't mention my case I will come out I will follow whoever is coming. I will hold the person coming out together with the usher and come and stand and say Lord you must visit me even if you will not speak or you touch me you don't have to come out right where you are even now even now even now even now even now now the question for you before we pray is do you believe do you believe outside do you believe I believe in Jesus I really do I believe in his power I believe in his power to turn around a life Do you know there are many people who don't know what a turn around is they think it's a Pentecostal language a turn around is is just is just a way is a frustrated way of describing the way God turns a man's story we just call it turn around when God gives you rest roundabout that you look left right forward backward and all you see is the faithfulness of God is called a turn around I just described someone's testimony tonight in the name of Jesus Christ may my God give you a turn around that you look around your life and all you see is his faithfulness rise up on your feet full of faith and let's pray shout this after me say father, father. one more time say father, father. tonight father. I, believe I believe that you are the God of all grace and I declare that my faith is ready to receive open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute ready to receive ready to receive ready to receive my healing ready to receive a sent word a global family make sure you pray release your faith as you pray ready to receive a miraculous manifestation 
ready to receive my miracle children my miracle spouse are you praying ready to receive miracle open doors it's a miracle service it must answer to its name in my life lift your voice and pray all the overflows pray outside pray our online family release your faith I release my faith. It's a new season in ministry. I release my faith. A new season for my finances. I release my faith. A new season for my family. Someone is praying. A new season for ministry. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to give you the next two or three minutes. You're going to mention specifics. The very areas you are trusting God to attend to. I know that you came with your prayer request, but I'm talking about areas that God will visit now as we pray. You know the areas of pain and concern. Be the prophet of your destiny. Open up your mouth and begin to place a demand. I'm releasing my faith with you. Go ahead and pray. Some of you is healing. Some of you is children. Some of you miracle marriages, a miracle spouse, miracle open doors. Some of you, you are trusting God to give you rest round about. Come on now, pray to the God of all grace, the God of all grace, the God of all flesh. Some of you greater anointing, greater prophetic fire, Greater apostolic fire, greater levels of wisdom, greater levels of insight, financial favor, strange connection to help us of destiny. Some of you are praying for peace. Some of you are praying for increase, enlargement. God desires to give you all things freely, all things freely. silent open your mouth and pray lord i'm trusting you to bring me out of financial calamity by the wisdom of god by the favor of god by the mercy of god turn my captivity turn my mourning to dancing sorrow to joy heal me oh lord and i will be healed save me and i will be saved you are my rock, my fortress, my salvation. A few more seconds, you are praying. You are praying seriously to the God that answers prayers. Let this demonic oppression over my life, let this demonic oppression over my family, let this mysterious attack over my health, attack over my relevance, attack over my person, attack over my business, let it give way tonight. name of Jesus majesty majesty your grace has found me just as I am empty handed but alive in your hands your majesty Majesty, 
In the name of Jesus, who is by the name Shola? I'm hearing a name Shola. That should be a Yoruba name. Shola, the Lord is speaking to me. Shola, if, if, if that is, I want to speak to that person very quickly. Shola, wherever you are, if you are in here, please let me speak to you very quickly. I'm hearing the name Shola. Shortly, we're going to be ministering deliverance. There are people who have gone under all kinds of demonic siege. Shola, where is Shola? I'm hearing a Hausa name, Godia. Godia means Thanksgiving in Hausa. That should be someone's name. Your name is Godia. Who is that person? Please come and stand here. Your season has come. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know who you are. Your name is not given to me, but you work in an oil and gas company. You work in an oil and gas company. The Lord told you I was going to call you when you come here. Come. Who is that person? You work in an oil. Please make sure you are not rash. Don't just jump and come out carelessly. You work in an oil and gas company. Palanto salicre feneca paratos calibre de balandoxia. Ah! Majesty. You work in an oil and gas company. Shola, I want to pray for your family. Where is Shola? I want to, all of you are Shola. Make sure that's no, I'm not saying you are standing for your brother or sister. If it's not you, just remain where you are. I want to pray for you because the Lord is telling me that He wants to open a door for the family, not just the individual. A door for the family. I'm going to pray for you, but this is for the family. Shola, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I decree and declare Godia, the power of God is coming on you. The power of God is coming on you. The power of God is coming on you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, the yoke of darkness, the yoke of darkness, causes that have tied your life down, tied your family down, in the name that is above all names. I'm releasing the power of God over your life now. Let those forces give way now. What God says to one, he says to all. So that I'm speaking to them does not mean you should not receive. I'm saying it again. These forces of darkness, as they are being delivered, I decree and declare, anyone going through a similar oppression be delivered now. Shola, the Lord is visiting your family, not just you. Family, help that gentleman. Your family, I curse that spirit right now and I declare divine visitation. Divine visitation divine visitation I don't know what God is doing for someone in an oil and gas company but I'm hearing the Lord saying you will own your own you will own your own you will own your own I'm just saying it as God is putting it in my heart I decree and declare let that man to rest on you now let that man to rest on you now let that grace rest on you now you will marvel and wonder at the power of prophecy let it rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing rain oil. Rain oil. R-A-I-N-O-I-L. I believe that's, I think it's a filling station or something like that. Or a company. Rain oil. Who works there? Rain oil. My friend, do you believe in the power of prophecy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I do. Where are you from? From Ghana. What am I seeing you do in UK? United Kingdom. Go and write it. Your days are numbered. God I'm is going to, to move you to a place of destiny. 
You believe that? Yes, I, do. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. Let that anointing rest upon you. Let it be a new season for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oil and gas. God is still speaking to me. You will own your own. This is what God is telling me. I'm prophesying it. I have to, once the word has gone forth, I know that it has left. I'm praying again. Whoever needs to receive this word, I decree and declare, let it rest upon you like the dew of hammer. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for the Godia person I prophesy to, I decree and declare, one testimony after another. This is how you begin to celebrate them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not ministering deliverance to people yet, but pick someone from Kogi State. A strong anointing is going to fall on a lady now. She's from Kogi State. Bring her here. Please return back to your seat. Kogi State. This is how God does his thing. From Kogi State. Kalanto sali krege beranto skobradi zeba. Ebranto zeleke fradige baratos. The Lord is setting a lady from Kogi State. This is her whole family. This thing has existed for more than 50 years. It has tied down the destinies of people. But the fire of God is visiting that lady. She's representing a family from Kogi State. Please bring her here. What God says to one, he says to all. But this is a particular word for someone from Kogi State. Kogi State. There's a lady called Mary. I'm seeing the power of God come on a lady called Mary. Who is Mary? The power of God is resting upon that lady. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, you will recover. You will recover. You will recover. You will recover in the name of Jesus Christ. You will recover. I'm prophesying the word of recovery for one Mary. Mary, the Lord is speaking to you in the name of Jesus Christ. How forcible are right words. When God brings a prophetic word, just know that an end has come to that situation. Madam Mary, I declare be set free now. Be set free now. In the name of Jesus. There's someone by the left side of the balcony. I'm seeing like fire resting on someone by the left side of the balcony you may not be able to help please help the person so they don't enjoy themselves the left side of the balcony the lord is telling me i am changing your story i am changing your story the left side of the balcony what he says to one he says to all let there be that deliverance for you in jesus name in jesus name now hear me everyone who is going to respond to this prophetic declaration let me tell you what you'll be responding to the spirit of stagnation has tied you down. I'm about to pray for you and the power of God will rest on you. All those who are coming under the anointing now, when that anointing rests on you, just know that you have been delivered from stagnation. I want you to bring them out, ushers. I decree and declare, as the Lord is ministering to me, everyone here who has suffered stagnation, you have been kept at the same level. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, let the power of the Holy Spirit locate you where you are and bring you deliverance now. Look, apareke parus ketepregata. Locate you where you are. Stagnated in life, stagnated in destiny. Be delivered now. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray that everything that represents stagnancy, begging me, keeping me in the same position, I take authority over it in Jesus' name. Is someone praying? Please bring them out. Everyone under the influence of this demonic spirit of stagnation gives way now. Stagnation in life and in destiny. Stagnation in life and in destiny. Outside. All the overflows following online be set free this moment. Be set free this moment. Shaka Paratos, 
by the power of the Holy Ghost be released to go forward be released to go forward be released now be released in the name of Jesus be released to go forward in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Please bring them out quickly. I want to pray something the Lord is putting in my heart now. I remember praying this prayer during one of the miracle services. And the Lord is asking me to pray. There is something connected to a demonic lineage of priesthood. Connected to a family. Demonic lineage of priesthood. Whether someone from that family and that lineage directly served idols or was a medium to contacting the divine and this thing has affected many families i want to pray for you right now wherever you are i stretch my hands i want you to bring them out my god there is a mighty deliverance about to happen everything by demonic orchestration that has tied everyone here who has come by the blood of the eternal covenant be released now be released now I set those altars on fire now. On fire now. On fire now. Aparakos ketebelekata. On fire now. Now that you are born again, I break the chain between you and ancestry. The chain between you and idol worship. The chain between you and superstition. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break free from idol worship. The Lord is setting people free. You may not even know that this has tied your destiny down. But the Lord sent you here tonight to experience liberty. Liberty indeed. Again, I'm praying for someone. Every cord that has tied you to the yokes of ancestry, the covenant of darkness and dark powers, in the name of Jesus, be delivered this moment. Bring them out. Be delivered this moment. Everyone's name that is on any demonic altar, for your destruction, for chaos, and for anarchy, if the blood could blot out every handwriting, then I decree and declare every coven carrying your name carrying your mission, carrying your destiny. Let it be consumed by fire now. Consumed by fire now. Consumed by fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kalate paratos kavrida meleke parantos sigetesh. Lekro sabira tu sabrenda baladus kiata. Good things never stay in your hands. It comes but it leaves. It comes but it leaves. Just when you are about to hold good news, something happens and it loses from your hand. I pray for you, whoever this person is, by this prophetic word, everything causing good things to slip out of your hands, I curse it now in the name of Jesus. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. Magdalene. I'm hearing a name Magdalene. I'm about to pray for the sick now. But I'm hearing a name Magdalene. And the Lord is telling me he's bringing restoration for Magdalene. He's bringing restoration. It will be like a dream restoration that before the end of November Magdalene I don't know who that person is in the name of Jesus God is bringing supernatural restoration whatever it is that you have lost by this prophetic word I speak to you experience restoration in the name of Jesus now let's pray I'm going to minister deliverance proper now in the next two three minutes I believe in deliverance. I do. Absolutely. I believe 
that people can be victims of satanic conditions and oppressions and behind many inexplainable situations are demonic occurrences. It's about to give way now. I'm going to ask you to shout that name, Jesus. You do not shout it as a ritual. It's not a journey or a, some kind of mental formula. I will ask you to shout it by the Spirit. There is an anointing upon that instruction. Remember what I taught you? At the shout of that name, Jesus, anyone who is under the influence of any kind of yoke, familiar spirits, the workings of darkness as you shout that name just once with faith in your heart fire will rest upon your life and through you rest upon your family i want you to quickly bring those people out so that i'll pray for them and then i want to pray for the sick in the name that is above all names father you have called this a miracle service there are lives and destinies under all kinds of yokes i decree and declare for everyone under the sound of my voice every spirit that has oppressed you every negative condition that is demonically engineered as you shout that name be free once and for all are you ready now one two three shout jesus be free now be released now Outside, be released. All the overflows, be released. Inside, be released. The balconies, be released. Connecting online, be released in the name of Jesus. Please bring them out very quickly. By the power of the Holy Spirit, bring them out. In the name of Jesus, oppressions of wickedness, be set free right now. Yokes, causes, ancestry, orchestrations of delay, orchestrations of retrogression. Be set free now for that gentleman, for that sister, that daughter of Abraham. Be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. I'm praying for them by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have been kept in one location, in one place. Nothing moves in your life. Nothing grows in your life. Nothing changes in your life. Today as you encounter this anointing, I pray for you. May God move you forward. May God move you forward in a fearful dimension. May God move you forward. Move you forward. Move your children forward. Move your family forward. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to me and is ministering to me that some of you came here so that you will be found of God. God wants to raise people in your family that becomes an access point for him. And that there are many of you he brought here and there is an anointing. This one is not deliverance. This one is an impartation. God wants to locate you by an anointing to show you that he has put upon you the mantle of a savior over your family. I don't know where you are, but in the name of Jesus, as you hear me, I decree and declare, let that oil locate you. Let that grace locate you. Ordained to be the savior of your family. Still bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I decree, receive an impartation. Receive an impartation. Receive an impartation. Receive an impartation. Some of you will be the first to bail your family financially. Some of you will be the first to introduce Jesus to your family. Some of you will be the first to help your, your loved ones to rise beyond a certain level. Anyone called into that ministry, I place grace on your life now. I place grace on your life now. Ah, someone is saying, Lord, here am I, send me, send me, send me. I'm still praying for you again. You came to contact grace. You may be the, the weakest. You may be a male, a female, it doesn't matter. I pray for you one more time. An anointing from heaven. Let it land on your head right now. 
it rest on your destiny right now. I'm hearing in my spirit that rejected stone. That rejected stone. I don't know what has made you rejected. Maybe in your family, maybe in your destiny, maybe among your contemporaries. Let me prophesy upon you. That rejected stone, let an anointing rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. For an extraordinary destiny, let it rest upon you now. Open your mouth and shout, say, Father. Say it again, say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I take my place in life and destiny. Open your mouth and pray. I take my place, the place ordained for me, the place commissioned for me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. I may be ordinary, but there is an ordination upon my life. I may be ordinary, but there is a grace on my destiny. And in this season, I decree and declare that I walk in the reality of my call. I walk in the reality of my assignment. The reality of my call. The reality of my assignment. In the name of Jesus, for all those in front here, I decree and declare every oppression of darkness over your life. I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant, it gives way now. It gives way now. Every legal access Satan has over your life, I declare that access broken now. In the name of Jesus, return to your seat rejoicing. I'm hearing the cry of babies, children. I'm hearing the cry of babies like, you know, like a baby crying. And when God ministers like this, I know that someone is about to receive the miracle of the fruit of the womb. I don't know who is trusting God, whether for yourself or for your loved one. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your miracle children. Return with twins and triplets in the name of Jesus Christ where you have tried and tried and tried and tried and it's not seemed to work. I release an anointing upon you and I decree and declare that this time around it will be your testimony. This time around it will be your testimony. This time around it will be your testimony. I'm seeing a family build an estate but they've been stagnated for a while like building a, 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 some unit of houses. This is what I'm seeing, but they've been stagnated for a while, like something just happened, pegged the resources, and they're not able to continue. Let me use that as a point of contact to pray for everyone here. When God starts a thing, he finishes. But you see, every time you see stagnancy, where there was once motion, it means that Satan has hijacked that process. For you, it may not be a house you are building. It may be a destiny you are building. It may be your business you are building. It may even be your spiritual life you are building that you started on a journey successfully so. And for some reason, Satan hijacked it in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for someone who is willing to receive by the power that raised Christ from the dead, what you have started, may it finish in your lifetime. May it be finished in your lifetime. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now hear me. I want to take a few minutes and pray a very special prayer for your finances. If you don't believe that prayers can be offered over someone's finances and God will change the person's story, then you are not a Christian. Are we together? By the message of God and with every sense of humility, I know a bit about finances. I understand the laws of wealth, but I know that there is a grace from God that can bail a man out. Do you know, when I was praying, I had to take the time to browse the major needs of Africans. I just took out time. I wanted to know, not just by word of knowledge, because ministers of the gospel are solution providers. Are we together? 
And do you know, let me tell you the truth, I got to find out, and many of you will honestly admit here, that as it is right now, many believers love Jesus already. So it's not an issue of not being serious spiritually. The major issue with people right now, right now, I was having a haircut and I was discussing with the person who was barbing my hair and I was just joking. I said, tell me how much a bag of rice is now. And he said, it's I think 95,000 or something like that. Or, or 100 or something. And I was just joking. I said, well, I'm sure that who knows by December now, just in the next one or two months, you will be surprised that it will be 100 and something even, you know, as it always does. There are many people who are stranded financially. Children have been driven back home by responsible parents just because they are incapacitated. They've gotten to a point where their salaries cannot do so much. That is the truth. Many people are gainfully employed. Gone are the days where it is lazy people who are crying for lack of money. Right now, people who have been working perhaps in the civil service, uh, doing the very best that they know to do. Let me tell you the truth. If you think the church cannot profess solution to financial problems, then you have limited the God of the Bible. When God steps in, he is able to supply all our needs. In order of spiritual priority, your spiritual needs. But the God who can only solve your spiritual problems cannot be called the Lord of all. The one who you call Lord of all is the one who is vast and powerful enough to attend to all and any matter of concern. Are we together? So I'm just telling you that when we get to the place where I'm speaking over your finances, please don't keep quiet. I submit to you by the grace of God, this house is like Goshen contrasting to Egypt. That while there was darkness in Egypt, there was light in Goshen. And if God has shown us mercy, you should not be a part of this vision and then be looking left and right, wondering where bread comes from. We have found a fountain in the spirit where waters flow without end. It is by the riverside. We don't wait for rainy or dry season. We have found help. It's an oasis that flows from the rock and it will never, never go dry. Never. Never. Never go dry. Are we together? You can only give what you have. Oh. If you don't have it, you cannot give it. By the grace of God, God has shown us mercy even in the area of finances. This is why the temptation to manipulate is a temptation that dies on arrival. It is unnecessary and it is foolish. Do you know why? Because when God helps you and gives you capacity in an area, he has also empowered you to resist the tendency for temptation in that area. When someone is eating and is full, you can't tempt the person with food. It won't work. There are many, many believers who love Jesus. Some of you right now, you are neck deep into all kinds of debt. Personal debt, corporate debt. There are churches, men and women of God who love the Lord and their churches are about to close because they are not able to pay the bills. I know a God who is merciful and kind, faithful and gracious. I'm the apple of his eyes, the thought that fills his heart every morning, noon, and night. Hold on. Praise the name of the Lord. Hold on. The Lord is showing me something that I saw many years ago, and I'm seeing it again. He's reminding me of a vision that he showed me where I was holding bread and the bread had honey. As I just raised this song, this is what I saw. You see, I, I've shared that vision here and people were not seeing the machine. There was a machine that I was the only one who was seeing it and it was producing bread and in case of butter, it was putting honey in the middle. You could press it and honey was coming out and there were multitudes joining the queue and all I was doing was to serve the bread and honey and then people would take it and call their neighbors and friends they would join the queue again and the shocking thing in that vision was that it never got exhausted it didn't matter how many times they were joining the queue you see there is a dimension 
of our call and assignment that attends to the welfare of God's people is a grace it's not a desire it's a grace it's a grace I will worship him forever love him forever because this God is too good I will worship him forever love him forever because hallelujah I want to pray for the sick right now I will pray for the sick and will come back to this finance thing please open up your heart to receive something on your head this night for your finances if you don't believe it no problem you can do whatever you know to do but allow those who believe it to receive are we together now don't interrupt another person's believing we believe all kinds of things about finances and everyone we live in a world where God gives you the liberty to believe what you want to believe and receive of the fruit of your understanding. Hallelujah. Lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. Now please, this is the prophetic instruction. I want you to listen carefully. I'm going to rebuke sickness now. Please, if you came sick, this is your moment. Remember, you prayed for an opportunity to discern. I'm going to minister to you by the spirit of grace and the moment I minister to you I want you to check yourself if you need to use the medical stand I want you to run there and confirm it for instance if it's high blood pressure you can go to the medical stand and confirm or you can go to the convenience and confirm depending on what your situation is but I'm going to pray quickly and then I noticed for a month or two we've not had the time to take testimonies we'll take a few testimonies right now it's important that we give an opportunity for people to testify and uh, we'll work with the time we have we have to take testimony so please listen as the power of God touches you some of you as you came under the anointing upon returning back to your seat you found out that the pain the discomfort everything is gone the moment I pray for you and I ask you to come if you are in the overflow outside make your way very quickly just tell the ushers and the protocol that I am coming to testify they will test you and allow you to come and um, you'll be allowed to stay at my left or my right and there'll be a few people who will just confirm you and will take a few testimonies for those who are following online i'm going to pray and release miracles right now particularly healing miracles the moment that happens we have our helplines the pr lines i want you to send in your testimony we'll take one or two to celebrate the good hand of god now if you came here listen carefully if you came here with a walking aid a crutch perhaps a wheelchair, some kind of aid, and you know that you have a bone condition, I'm going to start with you. Whether you are outside any of the overflows, when I pray for you, I'd like you to believe that you receive strength and I want you to do what you could not do before. And once we have a miracle confirmed for you and for any other person, there are others who were brought maybe on stretchers, others could not work, others you are not able to see, others you are not able to hear, others you are having blood conditions, palpitations you know all kinds of things release your faith now to receive place your hand where you are trusting God for a miracle and speak to the Lord in one minute and I release that grace upon you you can stand in for your loved one they may not be here physically but I like you to believe for a miracle for them and as we always do there are hospitals there are clinics there are medical places that are people now are right now following uh, life and they're about to receive miracles for their loved ones. I want you to encourage your loved ones to release their faith. And the moment we pray, we'll be glad to hear your testimonies. I see people laying hands on photos. Believe God for a miracle. The Bible says, he that cometh to God must come believing that he exists. I am a living testament of the healing power of Jesus. I know he heals. I know he heals. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Place your hand, I want to pray for you now. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns for 
in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I take authority over every spirit of infirmity. Every spirit of infirmity. Every spirit of infirmity. Blood conditions. Spirits responsible for palpitations, bone conditions, deteriorations of organs. I take authority over you by the blood of the eternal covenant and I decree and declare that you leave God's people now. I declare that you leave God's people now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit surge through your being right now, surge through your body right now, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I declare over everyone here sick in body, be healed now. Shout a believing amen, be healed now. Lumps and all kinds of satanic growths in your body, I command it to dissolve and to disappear now. Mobility problems. You are not able to walk. You are not able to stand. You are having bone problems, neck problems. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. You have any kind of eye condition you are not able to see or see clearly. I declare over your eyes, let the power of God touch your eyes now. I speak to anyone who is here deaf, be healed in the name of Jesus. Let the deafness be unstopped right now in Jesus' name. Anyone who is suffering from any blood condition, blood condition, the issue of blood or any kind of blood condition, be healed in the name of Jesus. I was so touched by the testimony that was shared here. I think it was, um, was it online or on site? The person who had, you know, vom would throw up anything that they, they ate and drank. I decree and declare any digestive problem that you have, you're suffering from, be healed right now in Jesus' name. There's someone you have a circulation problem. It's like something that has to do with excess fat in your body. Blood is not able to flow and circulate well. The Lord is healing you right now in Jesus' name. You have a neck problem. I don't know if you came with a bracelet or whatever aid, but I decree and declare that neck is healed right now. Shoulder pain be healed right now. Knee pain be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Kidney problems. You have any kidney problem. I declare that that kidney stone or whatever it is, it is flushed out of your body now. Flushed out of your body now. You have a respiratory problem. There's someone you have a serious respiratory problem. It makes you to snore. You snore very seriously. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. There is a woman, I'm saying that you have something like a growth and that growth is stopping you from taking in. This is what I'm saying. You have a growth and the growth is stopping you from taking in. I don't know who that person is, but in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that that growth shrinks and leaves your body. And you will feel it within your body that a miracle has happened. In the name of Jesus, there's someone you've been having a very severe, I don't know what your problem you're having with your tongue. Your tongue. Very severe. Is it pain? Is it irritation or discomfort? Very severe irritation. I declare to you, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Cancers of any and all sorts, whatever stage it is, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Anyone having a speech problem for you or your child, be healed now in the name of Jesus. Anyone believing God for an autistic child, we release the power of God and we declare healing right now in Jesus' name. Every mental health challenge, anyone who was brought here mad 
or brought here with any kind of psychosomatic condition, I decree and declare be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Now, whether I mention your case or not, I want you to be healed. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to lay hands on one person. I'm going to ask you to check yourself, but the Lord is mentioning someone's case for me and I am, the Lord is asking me to minister to you. This started from a dream. Listen carefully, please. Don't be careless to come out just because I said I would lay hands. It started from a dream. It's like you were fed with something in a dream. And from that time you woke up, you don't know the name of what is wrong with you, but you are losing weight. You are losing weight. It's like a demonic thing. I want to pray for that person very quickly. You woke up from a dream. And from the time you woke up from that dream, you've not been able to diagnose exactly what is wrong with you. But you are emaciating, you are losing weight. I want to know that person. I want to pray for you. It's a demonic thing. Hallelujah. We are still praying for the sick. Are we receiving? In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone, it's not, I don't know, it's your chest. I, I'm not sure it's directly your breast, but around your chest area, there's been something, a very, a, like a mast, something not directly on your breast, but are, are maybe the upper part of your chest, like a mast forming. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. That demonic, satanic thing gives way right now. Shout a believing amen. It gives way right now. It gives way right now. It gives way right now. A demonic thing. Who brought this woman? Who brought her? Come and tell us what is wrong with her. If she's not able to stand, give her a seat. I want to know what is wrong with her. Who brought her? She's your mom? No, she's my husband's. My Your husband's, husband's what? Come again? My husband's father's elder sister. Okay. What happened to her? This, this happened in 2021. After my husband passed. Your husband passed? Yes, sir. So in a dream, I saw that I was injected. Since then, I've been losing a serious weight. I was 125 before. I keep dropping 70 something. So it's a long story, but I came purposely because I'm a member of this ministry online. 24 hours I watch this program. I said I have to come here today. I flew last week to Abuja. And so you're incapacitated. Look at this kind yes, of sir. demonic thing. That Are you my seeing leg, this? I had a stroke, mini stroke in May, the 10th of May in Orlando, Florida. Since then, I've been going from hospital to a hotel. Hospital, I went to, I was supposed to come to Virginia. I mean, I was supposed to come to Madame, Dallas. Hold on. The power of God is coming on you, this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, this one you're holding. I decree and declare. I just saw like oil dropping on your head. I decree and declare. Whatever demonic thing leaves now, I bring you life, bring you healing by the Spirit of God. Now watch this. We're going to do this very, very quickly. My God, such miracles are happening to people. I'm going to lay hands on all of these people by myself. I think that should be enough, those who are here. The power of God has touched you. I want you to check yourself very quickly and make your way to the front here. We want to give you an opportunity. Do not fail to testify. The medical, now hold on please. Let me give you an instruction. The medical stand is right there. If you need to confirm a miracle from the medics, whether you are outside any of the overflow, please take advantage of it. But I want you to check yourself. You see that a miracle has happened. Um, there will be people standing by my left and right. Please very quickly, boldly, don't sit back when a miracle has happened. Let others be blessed from that which you have received. Make your way very boldly to the front and then um, come and share your testimony. But let me minister to these people by the Spirit of God. You can see that these are very demonic conditions by the power of the Holy Spirit. Very demonic situations. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, be set free now. In the name of Jesus, be set free now. By the power of the Holy 
spirit. So I pray for you, check yourself. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every demonic orchestration be healed now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Just, just leave them. I'll lay my hands on them. Here. I've been given instructions to pray for you. I declare and declare this. and thank the Lord for this miracle. Yes. In the month of June. Hold on, please. In the month of June. Yes. I was in Virginia. Hold on, please. Just a moment. In the month of June, sir, I was in Virginia. June 15 in the hospital. I had a dream that you visited me. I was, I was in a place like this where yes. I ministering. And I say, Apostle Selma, Dan la kagama yesu ye bani sabon jiki ye bani sabon rei and he has answered you look at me in jesus name let's walk together one more time are you celebrating a miracle a real manifestation of the power of god come come madam give jesus praise in the name of jesus christ that we were like in a dormitory the second encounter and you came in the midst of the double beds yes. and you were telling me that just be encouraged whoever did this thing hold on i'm seeing a vision i don't know if someone came here with a walking aid a crutch whether inside or outside i want you to lift it and walk i don't know who that person is lift it and walk whether you are outside in the overflow i just saw this vision there is a grace for it lift it and walk wherever you are in the name of jesus i declare perfection let's celebrate god for this woman's miracle have i prayed for her bring her bring her let's celebrate her miracle i'm not sure there will be room for her to testify since it's already done in the name of jesus christ be set free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. My God, look at that. Let's celebrate her. Now, hallelujah. If you've been touched by the power of God, we need to do this very quickly 
um, even if it's just one or two very mighty things that God is doing in this place one or two people we need to take a few testimonies if there are testimonies whilst that is happening I want you to quickly submit your prayer requests your prayer requests and let's have that those who are coming to testify um, please I'd like you to make way for them very quickly you check yourself you've seen that a miracle has happened um, I see a group of people there if they are coming out please clear the way for them very quickly let's have a few of those testifiers are you celebrating what Jesus is doing blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord Make sure you don't sit back if you have a testimony. Let's take a few of them very, very quickly. Very quickly. Whilst we are doing that, please submit your prayer request. You are in this place and you are trusting God. Hold on, please. Hallelujah. Is he able to walk now? He's taking it gradually. Let, let me know. Let me know what is happening there. Hallelujah. The power of God is going to come on a woman trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Just, it's not something mechanical. Wherever you are, uh, I'm, it may not be every woman trusting God for the fruit of the womb, but it's, it's a, the Lord is speaking to me. When that anointing rests upon you, just know that your season of waiting has come to an end. Hallelujah. And so the Lord is asking me to pray before we take a few testimonies of the mighty hand of God. will be very fast. There is, I believe that there are many people trusting God, but there is a woman. And as I'm speaking now, in the name of Jesus, you are married, you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I'm not saying you are standing for someone. Lord, I am praying. Wherever this woman is that you have ministered to me, like Elijah to the widow in Zarephath, or the woman in Shunem, I decree and declare right now, as you have spoken, let your anointing locate that woman, whether in this auditorium, whether at the overflows, outside, or connecting online. I decree and declare, let that anointing rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. And I prophesy to you that according to the time of life, you will return with your miracle child in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let's celebrate jesus in one moment for the mighty things that he has done okay yes sir all right let's sir. have a few testimonies so, apostle you gave a word of knowledge yes sir. regarding someone actually irritation on the tongue Severely. praise the lord so when you were ministering you say you don't know what it is but there's someone feeling pain on his tongue yes and for the past three days i've been experiencing that pain but after the word came forth, the pain is gone. In the Hallelujah. name of Jesus, it never returns. Let's celebrate what God is doing. God bless you, sir. Yes. Daddy, you made mention of someone that ate in the dream. I had a dream last year, and I ate something like chicken. By the time I bite the chicken, I saw worms in it. I woke up from in that dream. In the dream? Yes. I woke up in, from that dream, and I felt a movement on my throat. So since then, I've had issues of uh, ulcer high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high insulin. And they said my liver was enlarged. So you mentioned my case this evening. I walked out here. You prayed for me. All the symptoms I was feeling, they are gone and Come gone on now. forever. Are you celebrating Jesus? Jesus? Let me use this opportunity and pray for you. In the name of Jesus, where it came from, may it return back there. I'm saying it to you again, where it came from, no matter the distance in the spirit, it returns back to hell where it came from. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, sir. Celebrate Jesus for his testimony. Praise the Lord. Uh, I went for my mom's burial two months ago. They asked me to help them carry her. You went for your mom's burial? Yes. Where? In Kogi State. Okay. After I have them to draw, they say I should assist them. There are people carrying cars, but they insisted I should help them. Since after then I helped them, my neck for two months I couldn't sleep. If I turn neck, I couldn't turn it complete. 
But for now, I can't. Completely. That, that demonic arrow returns back to hell. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen and amen. Okay, Benga, go ahead. Apostle, she had an accident. She fell into a hole for about a month, so she had difficulty in walking. She fell and, into a hole. Yes, and they told her never to climb a stair. So while she was invited for the service, her friend now kept a seat for her up the back body. So by faith, she was there, and while the prayer was going on, the power of God fell on her, and then she can now walk, no pain in her leg. Look at this. Come, climb these stairs. Careful. Let's celebrate Jesus. Ah, it's enough. Oh. This lady has faith. May God bless you. Come on, celebrate her miracle. Gone forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. She had an accident last year and then she was operated upon by her right hand. So she couldn't lift the hand. But as prayer was going on, she... She couldn't lift the hand. hand. Yes, sir. Let the devil see it. Lift it now. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Any pain. In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfects your healing. It never returns to you again. In Jesus' name, let's celebrate our miracle. Yes, please, very quickly. Toothache and pain in her chest and neck, healed by the power of God. Toothache and pain. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare perfection for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Yes, please. Okay, you're still working on them? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Earlier this year, I can't really turn my neck. Sometimes, if I'm writing, I can't like turn. So when you say that we should check ourselves, it started yesterday. So when you say that we should check ourselves, I can't really turn my neck. I can bend. Turn it now. Left, right. Turn. I can bend. Any pain? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, the Lord brings you healing, perfection by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' right, name. So Apostle, she was actually healed of severe pain. She's been having this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mine has to do with a severe stomach ache and severe cold. While you, the, the father, our daddy said we should lay on where he's spending us. I lay down before he could even pray. He started the prayers, the pain had gone. And when he laid down on me, the cold disappeared. Completely. Yes. In the name of Jesus, restoration of your uh, health. And uh, sir, she's checked with the medical team. She's checked with the medical team. In the name of Jesus Christ. No yet. Okay, so after this, you can go and check to verify everything, eh? May the Lord bless you. Your healing is perfected in Jesus' name. God bless you. Good evening. I had this abdominal pain for years. So while we were praying, um, I placed my hand on my abdomen, believing God for healing, and now the pain is gone. Completely. Yes, sir. Place your hand there. I decree and declare perfection for you. You'll never return back again in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Yes, please. Very interesting testimony here. Yes, sir. Good evening, Apostle. So, when I came to church, I was having a pain on my right breast. Although it was in both, but it was severe here. Because I could even hug my friend because it was hurting. But I went to the medical stand now after you prayed for someone with a pain like on the chest. And then the doctor pressed and then the pain is gone. The doctor pressed and there was no pain. Yes. Completely. Yes, sir. Let's celebrate what Jesus is doing in the name of Jesus Christ. You will search for every challenge that brought you here and you will not find it again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Perfection for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready? Go ahead. Pain in our body for over a month, healed by the power of God. Healed service. by the power of God. My dear, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit. I'm seeing something like a dark shadow on that lady. I declare you are released from it now. Never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Give Jesus praise. You can return to your seat. Next person, quickly. She has had pain in her two knees for over five months that she could not walk perfectly. Okay. Now she couldn't climb stairs. What couldn't you do? I couldn't climb the staircase up and down. I you have too. to hold the rail. But well, as you prayed, she now quickly went to climb the stairs, ran up and down. Come and try this one, let's see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we celebrate your miracle. It will never return to you again. Health and vitality is yours in Jesus' name. Yes. Apostle, you gave a word of knowledge of those who come with walking aid to lift his down. Yes. Our mommy came all the way from UK. And she came from UK. Yes. That's your walking aid. Lift it up. Walk. Lift it up. 
Lift it up. Look at this. All the way from UK, are you celebrating a miracle? My God. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Everything that is out of joint, everything that is out of structure, out of order in your life, as God has visited our mother, I'm praying for you. Yours may not be pertaining your body, may be another area of your life, but I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, receive the miracle of realignment. I say to you, if you believe, receive the miracle of realignment. Mommy, we pray for you. I stretch my hands. I declare perfection. Yes. You brought all these prayer requests. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For my children. It's okay. Let me touch it for you. Since you have come all the way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Careful. You return with a testimony. Every single one of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, please. Let's see if we can Praise take... Um... Lord. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Praise God. I was here for the first time last week, Sunday, and I was at the balcony. And before I left, I started feeling pain in my arms. I could not do anything with my arm. I couldn't raise it. I couldn't turn my hand anywhere. I even had to cry out to my sister who traveled. And I don't know what is wrong. Nothing happened, but my arm is paining me. Why would I go to church for healing and I'm coming back with pain? That was crazy. What happened now? I, I just I discovered I can do all, like I can move it everywhere. So she's healed now. So you are healed. Completely healed. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ, we receive your miracle and we declare Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you again. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus for her miracle. So Apostle, she's been having excruciating chest pain. Excruciating chest pain. I, when I was at home, one afternoon, my brother told me that I ate in the dream. He saw me, he always see me eating. Your brother said you? Yes, he's okay. a member of this choir here. Okay. This is my first time of being here. He always tell me, I say, me, eat, how? I can never eat in the dream. It's in the day, I started three days fasting. As I started the three days, first time I started the fast is, as I, as I started the fasting, I saw myself eating, and we prayed. He prayed over. He said, I should come today. As I came today, I came to the miracle, and, and I was now upside when you prayed that. If you're having chest pain, if you have eaten the dream before, and you have having any pain, it's gone immediately. The pain vanished. And Completely. Welcome to Koinonia, darling. This is Koinonia. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, I had an injury during COVID, so the whole of COVID, I was not able to walk. COVID? Um, yeah, during COVID, that's 2020. Okay. So during that time, I could not walk, I did not play football. I had the injury while playing football. For some reason, I believed that uh, that was how God wanted it, because that was when I got closer to God. But since that time, for like two years now, I've not played football. But right now, after we prayed, I just tried to run now, and I was able to run perfectly. You were able to run? Yes, Try it, one more time. You are a footballer, let's go. Ah, this man is a serious footballer. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is a way they run. May God lift you, eh? May God lift you and honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, please. Apostle, she came here very sick. This is her husband. They had gone to the hospital to divide medical attention. And then she couldn't even stay close to the fan. She had gone to the covenant for like eight times in the course of the service. But as she prayed, she fell under the anointing and all the pain is gone. Completely gone. You're welcome, husband and wife, in the name of Jesus Christ. This healing remains permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Permanent in Jesus' name. Let's celebrate them. God bless you. This is from one of our workers. She has been having a pepperish pain in her back for about two, three months. Yes. But as you prayed, the pain disappeared and now. she hold now. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's celebrate her miracle. She was healed of hepatitis B. The last time she checked, it was positive. But as you prayed, then she went to the medical stand and she tested negative. Com Verified by the medical... Verified by our medical practitioner. Let's give Jesus praise. That's a real miracle there. Never returns to you again, darling, in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Okay, 
have been for the past two weeks now. We receive a revelation in my family that our, my enemy is going to die. They saw me dead. So we've been praying and I've been, after that revelation, I, I, I became sick. Pains all over my body. Leg pains, in fact, it has been persisting and I've taken all the medication and still nothing. So even when I came to service today, I went to the medical center to tell them that in fact my head i'm having headache what happened now at the end of, when i went back they sent me back now i can my legs everywhere i'm i'm fine you I'm won't fine. die in jesus name Amen. in the name of jesus we declare that you leave to declare the works of the lord in jesus matchless name we pray another case of hepatitis b healed since 2019 now she has gone to the medical staff Come on, give and Jesus she's been praise. confirmed negative. Hepatitis B gone. gone. Are you celebrating Jesus for this? It will never return to you again. Never return to you. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Yes, Pastor Jakes, go ahead. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for healing me of um, a chronic breast breathless chronic pain when i was coming this evening it looked as if i wasn't able to even move my legs at all one of the protocol can testify to the when i was coming one of the ushers said i should go outside to sit down and i told him that no i can't stay outside because of my health condition so he had to call a protocol they directed me to sit at the gallery downstairs so as we were ministering it looked as if I like an injection. Someone took me an injection where we are declaring. Then I started throwing up, throwing up, throwing. Up. I even got a lilo, pouring all those people in them. Then immediately I started breathing very well. I, I cannot even move my leg, I can jump. And another time you mentioned someone that is emaciating, something happened in the dream, and somebody started emaciating. Like when I when I was in second list today, they used to call me Oroba. I was very fat. I grew up in Lagos, so they call Oroba fat people. So now because what what now God has visited you miraculously. So sir, just to quickly add, yes. The beautiful jacket she's wearing on is not just fashion. She actually suffers from severe cold. So she's gone to the medical stand, they've actually checked her. Mm. Although the symptoms have actually disappeared, they've encouraged her to actually go for a test. But as she stands now, the symptoms have actually disappeared. You are able to breathe. Yes, I'm even sweaty. I, want, I always wear a jacket because of cold. In the name of Jesus, you will go to the hospital and they will not find anything there Amen. again. We agree. We release our faith with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we have one or two so that would... Um, remember, I'm still supposed to speak over your finances. Are you still interested? <laughs> Hallelujah. Sir. Praise God. Okay. Yes. Yeah, 2020, when she was about put him to bed when she was about giving birth the doctor confirmed that it's a challenge that could come for people in pregnancy she had difficulty in twisting her hand and since then she has not been able to do that but as you were praying the power of god touched her and she could lift her hand and twist she couldn't hand. twist the hand yes how long uh, this four years sir four years if i raise my will be heavy my mom be screwed. since you gave birth yes okay try it now I I give birth. do what you couldn't do do what you couldn't do. Any pain. Go ahead. Do what I'm doing. Any pain at all. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus for that supernatural miracle. It will never return to you again. Health, perfection, vitality is yours in Jesus' name. Is that the last one? Let's take that yes, as the last one so that he we has pray. had difficulty in seeing properly. But as you were praying in seeing properly. So as you prayed, he went to the medical stand. And the doctors did med uh, basic medical eye test, and it's fine. Like could see what couldn't could you breathe. see? How was the condition before like, now? I still have inches with my eye. Okay. It's a very difficult need to see clearly from the board, yes. even when I'm writing. So and now? The inches is gone. No more inches in my eye. In the eye. name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Amen. It will never return to you. You are healed. You are perfected forever. In Jesus' name. Our online family, we're sorry we may not be able to take your testimony now, but do feel free to send it. Um, we have to get to the next part of the program in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and receive a prophetic word. And we will say that you are good and all the miracles you've done has brought us joy. And we are changed and all the hope we have we place in you right now. That we love you, we declare our everlasting love.
holy. One more time with faith in your heart. Father, we declare that we love you. We declare everlasting love. Hallelujah. Can you stretch your hands by faith to this prayer request? When we do this, what supports what we're doing is the understanding that this is an act of faith. This is a representation of your desires. And whilst you're releasing your faith, I'm releasing my faith with you. So go ahead and pray. Ask the Lord to turn every request here to a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll go down my knees right now and speak over your requests. Shali kaparundo skobraki barato skebada. Shalabranda barako shopratis ke British kiete. Krata barada baka pranti shalabradi ke de balade bosh. Lord, visit your people. Turn their mourning to dancing. Turn their sorrow to joy. Give them testimonies. In the name of Jesus, are you declaring by faith? Are you declaring by faith? The Lord, in the name of Jesus, I lay down my request. I will pick up my answers. I lay down my request. I will pick up my breakthrough. I lay down my request. I lay down delay to pick up speed. Someone is praying. I lay down shame to pick up honor. I lay down stagnation to pick up advancement. I lay down retrogression to pick up greatness in the name of Jesus Christ I lay down poverty and I pick up abundance let your fire rest upon this let it be turned to a harvest of answers I lay down barrenness and I pick up supernatural children I lay down joblessness and I pick up a flourishing job I lay down spiritual lukewarmness and I pick up fire for my spirit man. I lay down ignorance and I pick up abundance of knowledge and understanding. I lay down sickness and ill health. I pick up health, strength, vitality. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I present to you the request of your people an expression of their faith and their trust in you. They have brought this prayer request in faith, believing that you are the God that does wonders even in the midst of your people. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that every request here penned down by faith, let it return to your people as a harvest of answers. Shout amen like you believe. Let it return to you as a harvest of answers. In the name of Jesus. May God intervene supernaturally. May God intervene using the ministry of man. May God intervene by connecting you to help us of destiny. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus Christ, the same way you took time, to write the request that is the same time you would you the, the same way you would take the time to acknowledge the doings of God one by one where you drop shame pick up honor where you drop retrogression pick up advancement where you drop sickness pick up health and vitality where you drop suffering and stagnation pick up ease and abundance in the name of Jesus Christ where you drop barrenness, pick up a harvest of children. Where you drop lukewarmness, pick up fire and vibrancy in the spirit. I decree and declare by faith that these Egyptians you see today, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, may you see them no more forever. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Please stand. I want to speak over your finances. Hallelujah. My greatest joy as a man of God is to see everyone excel in every area of your life. First, your spiritual life. Loving Jesus, 
being on fire, a vibrant prayer life, a vibrant word study life. Are we together? Becoming men and women of character after the image of the Christ. My prayer and my desire again is to see a people transformed, fortified by knowledge and understanding. Are we together now? My prayer thirdly is to see a people empowered by the Holy Ghost, accomplishing strides and possibilities that can only be by the agency of the Spirit. My prayer and my desire for you is to see a people who are purpose-driven, people who are not just driven by needs, but driven by vision. That every time you cry for a need, it is because it is a requirement for your divine vision. But my prayer, in addition to all others, is to see a people empowered, enjoying the covenant of peace, nothing missing, nothing broken. I hope that I'll be able to talk about finances one more time before the year is done. Because um, truly, from an economic standpoint, many people are being challenged and any responsible person who loves God and loves his people should at least leave a note of understanding. I reckon with the fact that many people are bankrupt of financial resources either because of laziness or because they do not understand the laws that make for wealth and abundance. Others do not understand the law of value. They are not productive. They are not and where they are productive, they do not know how to sell their value intelligently. But I also know that there are others who have done all they know to do as per the laws of wealth and abundance. And their finances have just been hijacked by all kinds of demonical forces or the biases and sentiments of men that plague our world, that stops our lives from being ideal. That sometimes you can do what is required, but an individual can stand as a blockade to your efficiency. So that the result that should be from your diligence is sabotaged by the wickedness and the antagonism of someone else. At such times, you need beyond skill. You need the power of God. You need the wisdom of God. Let me tell you the truth. Prophecy plays a role in genuine, lasting wealth and abundance. Make no mistakes about it. When people act like they didn't route their wealth through the Spirit, it's not true. There is an equation of their success that you are not aware of. You are only aware of the transactional dimension of their sustainable wealth. I can tell you by the mercies of God that there is a component to wealth and abundance that is hinged on the prophetic. The root of anything that has longevity is the realm of the spirit. Either a demonic dimension of the spirit realm or the realm of the spirit are sponsored by the Holy Ghost. So in addition to value, productivity, relationships, increase, investments, business, and all that you have known and learned, either formally or formally, let me introduce you tonight to a dimension, a superior, mysterious, but potent dimension that wealth can happen by prophecy. Are we together now? You can reroute favor from wherever it is and draw it into the space of a man to enhance his becoming. Prophecy does not take away the need for productivity. In fact, it is enhanced the more you are productive, the more you are, you, are, you are excellent selling value. I want to pray for you and I want you to be very serious as you receive. Especially if you know that things are not all right financially. Don't waste this moment. Hallelujah. Don't waste this moment. Make up your mind that you are going to receive. And even where God has helped you financially, you can still go further and higher so that it gives you room to serve God more. I look forward to people here who will come to Koinonia and say, give me the yearly budget, financial budget of Koinonia. And as a single person, you will write it. I know that you have the heart already. When God places the resources in your hands, I know you will do it. For now, God is taking us gradually. We are not ashamed of growth. For many of us, it took time and it took diligence and the mercy of God and prophecy like you are receiving now. No matter how anointed you are, it will take time. But I'm praying for you, particularly for those of you who are in serious financial issues now. Housing issues, rent issues, food is even the worst. I believe that nobody under the sound of my voice, especially a believer, should go to bed hungry. It shouldn't be. It should be an economic policy and I know that the government is doing the best that they can and know to do, but we owe a responsibility, are we together, to be able to use the prophetic and help enhance the quality of living of a people. 
I will feel very guilty as a man of God that I come to you here for hours, minister to you, and that you have people who go back home void of favor, and that you and your children will sleep hungry while I'm enjoying a nice meal in my house. It is not the character of a true shepherd. If I'm eating in my house knowing that there is bread in your house, we both are happy and God is glorified. In the name of Jesus, the cause of emptiness in your life, financial emptiness in your life, I pray for you by the God of grace and God of mercy, this night, by a prophetic word I declare, enjoy supplies from today. Enjoy supplies from today. Enjoy supplies from today. Enjoy financial supplies from today. May God raise strangers, men you do not know, and cause them to be interested in your rising. May God raise captains of industry and direct their interest to you and your family. In the name of Jesus, I forbid you from begging. I forbid you from begging by the wisdom of the Spirit. I forbid you from begging by the favor of God. I forbid you from begging by the gift of man. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that God is able to give us treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places where the eyes of men cannot see. May God show you gold in the midst of debris. May God show you gold in the midst of chaos. You will see things others don't see. You will capitalize on opportunities for your profiting. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, whoever is looking for a man to help, may they find you whoever is looking for a man to lift may they find you in the name of jesus for those of you who are owing you are owing corporate debt personal debt ministry debt i decree and declare by the gift of men the ministry of helpers come out of that financial calamity now come out of that financial calamity now I bless the works of your hands. Go and prosper in business. Go and prosper in your career. Go and prosper in your investments. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare every careless decision, depleting your finances, careless financial decisions, I decree and declare, may the wisdom of God bail you out of such kind of lifestyle in the name of jesus since you believe in financial testimonies i release it to your life this week i release it to your life this week i release it to your life in addition to your spiritual growth in addition to your prayer life in addition to your word study in addition to your loving jesus in addition to your serving jesus i declare go and prosper Go and prosper with dignity and with honor in the name of Jesus. For some of you, you have been helped by God, but the dimension you will experience this week, let it be such that you have never seen before. Let it be such that you have never seen before in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare, let something rest on your head from tonight. Hear me? Hear me, favor is likened to light that shines upon the face of a man, a glow that attracts help. I'm praying for you, whatever has covered you, so that those who help you cannot identify that you are the one they were sent to. I declare that veil is torn from off your face. That veil is torn from off your destiny, torn from off your face. In the name of Jesus, finally I pray for you in the name that is above all names hear me every assignment you have now before you that depends on finances wherever god has ordained for that money to come from i don't care if it's in millions or billions provided it is for your destiny and will ultimately lead to the glorification of the christ i stand by prophecy i gravitate those resources to your life 
I gravitate those resources to your life. I hope you believe it. I gravitate those resources to your life. For some of you, while you are here in Nigeria, foreigners, God will connect you to men across the nations. They will desire to help you of their own accord. They will hold your hands and see to it that you are empowered also. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you. The distraction that comes with prosperity, I decree and declare it is exempted from your life. The spiritual lukewarmness that befalls men in the presence of plenty, may it be far from your life. You will prosper still having your zeal for Jesus. You will prosper still having your passion for Jesus. You will prosper still prioritizing the kingdom. You will prosper and your resources will be beneficial for the kingdom. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Now wave your hands to Jesus as a sign of faith. Thanking him for all that has happened tonight. Wave your hands for the miracles, for the prophetic words that have come upon your life. The honor, the favor, the open doors, the deliverance. Wave your hands in anticipation for the many testimonies that will follow you all through this week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for your patience. Allow me the opportunity to make an altar call for the sake of someone who needs to make it right with Jesus before leaving this place. You came to church from the opening prayer, the announcements, praise and worship, the word session, the miracles. You watched everything that would convince you that Jesus is alive. I do not want you to just see and watch and be excited and clap and cry and be emotional and go back home. Let me give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. I'm doing two calls in one. Number one, for those who are saying, Apostle, if it's for my sake, please take a minute and give me an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Number two, those who are saying, I want to rededicate my life with Jesus. Upon seeing all that I've seen today, I truly need Jesus. Wherever you are, God bless you, my dear brother is coming. I'm going to count one to five with boldness and confidence. Leave your seat and come to the front. Wherever you are, across the balcony, up, down, outside, let's celebrate them as they come. You are coming to Jesus, the lover of your soul, your Savior, your Lord, your King. Are there still people coming? As the Holy Spirit prompts you, do not sit back. It's a new day for you. It's an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. They are still coming. Let's, let's encourage them as they come. I see people coming from outside. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep clapping Koinonia until they are here. For those of you who are making this decision online, distance is no barrier. As I lead these ones to make this prayer of salvation, I'd like you to join them wherever you're connected from and believe in your heart that as you make this prayer, Jesus becomes Lord of your life and experience. Thank you. You're joining them. Please make that quickly and let's do the salvation prayer together. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. It's always an honor for me personally as I lead people to Jesus, this is what he desires, that all men be saved and that they come unto the knowledge of the truth. So you're joining us from here, joining us online. I want to salute you for the courage to declare his lordship over your life. Let me request that you lift your right hand and say this loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I've heard your word. I have seen your power. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands as I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I call these ones bona fide recipients of the life of God. They have declared your lordship over their lives consciously. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the grace to live and walk in victory 
let it be theirs from tonight in the name of Jesus the grace to live the victorious Christian life to grow in grace to grow in knowledge I pray that the Lord will impart it upon you right now I decree and declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave indeed is broken over your life you are a new creation in Christ Jesus you go from glory to glory grace to grace in Jesus name we pray amen and amen please look to my right that should be your left there are counselors waving the placard that will have a word with you and to pray with you and then you will quickly return to your seat let's honor them as they go thank you thank you so much thank you God bless you are you are you still clapping for them koinonia let's honor them hallelujah praise the name of the Lord hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so next week um, we'll take a fast on Sunday morning. Just, just um, we'll take a fast up until, um, let's say four, so that you are able to break and prepare your heart for what God is going to be ushering us into. So please take out time. When we ask that we fast like this, um, hopefully we're going to structure a lot of other fasting programs that will be extended enough to give us room to really maximize the blessedness of fasting and prayer you can not really fast one day and do much sometimes you need to have extended periods where your spirit man is built and um, we have programs for that for now we're trying to squeeze out on every opportunity that we have to maximize that so on Sunday um, by Saturday Saturday night the media would put up the prayer focus if you just abstain from food and you don't pray and study strategically you didn't maximize your fasting so fasting is beyond just abstaining from food if you're on a health program that's fine but if you are really fasting for spiritual benefits uh, what gives credence to your fasting is not just abstaining from food but the time that is invested in knowledge invested in flogging it out with God and destiny the time invested in prayer and all the other spiritual activities that's what gives life to your fasting so on Saturday night hopefully by 6 p.m the media would put the prayer focus so that we can take the time and then we'll pray. And for those of us who um, are praying and craving for extra time to just pray, unfortunately, because we meet only once a week, we don't have that kind of time to stretch as your spirit man and your growth should desire. Um, let me invite you to the prayer department's prayer meeting Tuesdays from 4 p.m. at our other venue at DOA. You don't have to be a member of the prayer department. You can just walk in, tell them I came to pray, and then you'll be guided. And just, just press it upon your spirit, man, particularly for those who just got saved. It's important that when people get saved, they're introduced to the ministry of prayer so that it primes your growth. It sets the pace for effective growth in the spirit. Hallelujah. Let me encourage you as you leave, make sure you invest time in prayer. You invest time in the structured study of the word. You invest time listening. Go back again and listen at least to the word session of this meeting tonight. And there are more than enough teachings for you to get online. Go to Koinonia Global. You can meet our media team if you want any advice on how to maximize your learning process using the word. They are up the balcony. You can see any of them after service. And they'll be glad to give you recommendations. You can meet any of the ministers around. They can be glad to help you further structure a profitable Christian life. I desire that we become people who are matured, dexterous, furnished in righteousness. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Have you been blessed tonight? Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. I declare that your weak beginning is blessed in Jesus' name. The hand of the Lord is strong upon you. You will see the evidence of this miracle service all through the week. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will be back-to-back -back testimonies from tonight up until Sunday and up until the month November in the name of Jesus. I call your November a blessed month. I call it a month of favor. I call it a month of testimonies. I call it a month of breakthrough. I call it a month of lifting. You will see the hand of God strong upon your life. You will make constructive destiny along the path of, I mean, a, a constructive progress along the path of destiny in Jesus' name. I bless you with honor. I bless you with favor. Goodness and mercies follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ, fresh fire upon your prayer life, fresh fire upon your word study life. You are separated from evil. 
naysayers are far from your life, evil doers are far from your life. All who will make for your favor, may they appear this week. All who will make for your spiritual efficiency, may they appear this week. Wisdom is yours this week. You will make quality decisions that enhance your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Together, let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives, as we dwell in the house of the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Hug someone by your left and right and tell them congratulations. See you on Sunday. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.